Okay, well, today I'm going to hook up uh, a receptacle to this power meter to have temper sort of temporary power. I just wanted to start off by saying this is extremely dangerous and, uh, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. And this is not an exactly, uh, not exactly a how-to so much as a how I'm doing it. So, I guess let's get into it. Why exactly is it dangerous? Because you'll get shocked and die. So, you might die? Yeah. Great. Okay, this breaker right here is currently off. Okay, so that means that these two down here have no power. Now, I'm not just going to trust that they don't have no power. I'm going to test it to make sure. But uh, these two should have no power. But up in there, those two bolts right here with the, uh, with the red tips, those are hot all the time. So definitely don't get up in there. But in everything below this breaker, this shutoff breaker, it's a 200 amp breaker, should be off. And the way you want to test that normally is you would, uh, you would have, you know, uh, an electrical tester, but I don't. So I'm going to put a glove on and uh, arc across them and everything and make sure they don't have any power. All right, no power. There's all these little knockout holes where you can knock out different diameters of holes and things, but there's also small ones. I'm just going to knock out a small one. You guys are going to have to pardon my camera work. Alright, so I got the board on there solid. Now what I got here is the 12-2 indoor wire. Lowe's didn't sell it by the foot, and I only need like, you know, one and a half or two feet of it. And uh, the actual, normally what you would want to use for this is the gray outdoor rated Romex. But it was like $26.00. And this was 12, so I'm just going to use this, and it'll it'll work just fine. Not much rain and stuff is going to get right up underneath here anyway, but... So let's just estimate... I'll just cut it off there. Now I'm just going to split this wire. Inside of a 12-2 Romex, you've got um, a hot neutral and a ground. And since I'm not running, you know, any 220 or anything like that, I'm just going to come off of one side. Um, this is 200 amp service, so, uh, you know, each one of these would deliver, you know, like 100 amps or whatever. So I'm just going to come off one side. And uh, I'm not going to use anywhere near that. Um, I did get the 20 amp rated wire and 20 amp receptacle. So I could, you know, go up to 20 amps, but I'll never probably even use that much. Alright, the last thing I'm going to hook up is the, is the actual power side. Okay, 
so I got this plastic outdoor box receptacle box and then I got this 20 amp outlet that's uh, weather resistant so these boxes will come with these little plugs depending on how many holes you get and uh, you just want to plug up the holes you're not using and then uh, if you get a, a three-quarter inch um, wire clamp then you don't have to use this but I got a half inch so and I should have got another one for this hole but I didn't think of it so I'll have to I'll have to come back and unhook it from this and run run one in there to keep the wire from cutting into the metal there all right, what we want to do, um, I'm not going to worry about putting like thread tape or anything around there. Um, I guess you could, but I think, you know, it'll probably seal just fine without it. I'm just going to screw that in there. And then I'm going to make sure it's facing out. Okay, now just feed those down through there. Make sure your your plastic comes through a little ways. I think that should be plenty. Okay, that's that's in there good. So now we need to strip these wires. I don't have handy dandy wire strippers, so I'm just gonna use a pocket knife here. Let's see. A lot of times on these it'll give you a, like a, a little gauge on the back to show you how far to strip, but I'll just kind of guesstimate it here. Okay. All right, now. On these, on these receptacles, these 20 amp ones, you can always tell a 20 amp because they have that little T shape. The small side is the hot and the big side is the neutral. And then your, your ground screw is green. You can always tell which side is hot because it'll have gold or copper colored screws and the neutral side will have silver and the ground is usually always green so now I'm hoping you can see me doing this but if you can't I apologize okay so our hot is gonna be black now in these newer types you can just, you know, stick the wire straight in those holes. You don't have to go around the screws anymore. So, that's kind of nice. So you just... I hope you all are being able to see this. I guess I could turn this around. So you just kind of put the wire in that hole and then tighten her down. You want to snug them up kind of good. And then, okay, it looks like the ground does not have that option, so we will have to uh, bend the wire around. Now, when you bend wire around, 
you want to make the uh, the bend go the direction that you're tightening. I apologize if you, if you all aren't able to to see some of this, so I'm trying to get this done before it starts raining, kinda. Alright, so there we have that. And then we'll just stick our white in this other side. Okay, so there's that. So we're gonna kinda bend this all down in there. Try not to lose your screws. Kind of make sure you're in the center. Looks good. All right, so there we have that. Now, in a breaker box, it's going to be a lot different. But on this box, to the power company, what once you go back up the pole, neutral and ground are basically the same thing. Um, neutral and ground are always kept se separate once you get to your house, and that's for electrical safety. But um, as far as we're concerned right now, the neutral and the ground, as you can see, there's the neutral wire from the power company, and here's the ground uh, copper wire. So, as far as we're concerned, neutral and ground are the same thing. So we can take our neutral and ground wires, um, kind of just stick them together, and then we can put both of those in that, in that ground bar, and then that'll be our hot. Then all we got to do is just screw this to the to the board here. And if I was doing this by hand, if I didn't have the screw gun, then uh, those two just like that would be fine. But it's so fast and easy, I'll just go ahead and put the other ones in too. And that's on there. Split this wire down some. Now I'll go ahead and just open up this little one down here because it's not being used. I'll just kind of wad that up a little bit. Stick those in there. And I'm looking in there to make sure that it's touching the bare wire and not the plastic coating. Okay, so that's in there. And then now all we'll have to do is go up into that. But I'm going to finish um, putting the cover and everything on this outlet first because I don't want to be messing around with stuff once I hook it up. Oh, and in case you're wondering, you know, how, how it is I'm putting, you know, 100 amps or whatever through a little 12 gauge wire, um, the guy at the HEP uh, electrical supply. He told me that um, that it's perfectly fine to do that. You know that this outlet will only draw as much as it can draw, and that's it. So, you know, again, this is not a how-to. This is how I'm doing it. So, I'm sure I'll get 400 comments about how I'm going to die and all kinds of stuff. But we'll see. 
Maybe I will. Maybe this is my last video. Who knows? All right, so I went and got one of these um, weatherproof covers and everything. So we're going to put that dude on. Now these are kind of a kind of a booger to put on because you have to hold the uh, the doors open to get to that uh, middle screw. So I just put the middle screw in first. And then it's got this foam on the back you have to line up. There we are. Now I looked for a uh, a weatherproof, a waterproof uh, little wire nut thing here, but I couldn't find one. So I might just take some like spray foam or something and cover that whole thing in it. And for the time being, I I've bent this. Uh, I've bent this wire in such a way that it's going down through that hole in exactly the middle. It's not touching any side of that hole till I can get a proper proper wire nut thing in there. So, all right. Well, we shouldn't be left with anything to do but go ahead and hook it up to that. So, hopefully, this has got enough power to to break that thing loose because I don't really, you know, like the idea of using my bare hand with a metal tool like you know oh yeah now again I'm gonna look in here and make sure that nut is down on yeah we're good all right now theoretically when I flip this on none of this should melt so Let's see what happens. Ta-da! Okay, so now let's get something to plug into it and make sure she works. Okay, so the only thing I have to test this with is, uh, is this blue air compressor. So that's what we're going to test it with. There you are and that's how I'm hooking up temporary power for while I'm building and everything and if we come out camping you know this is 20 amp will run a good size air conditioner even you know a little window air conditioner be enough to cool a tent or whatever so but I'm always just gonna leave this off and uh, put all this back on Now I've got a padlock I'm going to go ahead and put on there, but other than that, there she is. And the electric company has nothing against doing something like this, so.